So I've had about a month or so to use the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. What you see here is a dual screen laptop. It has two 2.8K OLED displays and they are absolutely gorgeous. I think it goes without saying, we'll get into all the metrics and everything in this video, but this is a really versatile laptop, very unique in a lot of ways. And I think it's going to be great for the multitasker. It's going to be great for somebody who needs to have dual displays to do work for productivity, spreadsheets and the like. But it'd also be great for content creation on the fly, although it only has integrated Iris XE graphics. We'll get into the graphics performance. But I think the overall aesthetics and the overall package here is something that's pretty interesting. I've been really enjoying my time here with the Yoga Book 9i. We're going to get into why I think this is a very unique laptop that might just be worth the very hefty price tag that it comes in at. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, you can pick up the Yoga Book 9i over at Best Buy with a price of $1,999.99. And at first blush, you might say, well, that's a lot of money to pay for a laptop with a U-series processor, but you are getting the dual displays and you're getting the total package here with all the accessories. So that's a really good deal at the end of the day. Again, links for everything will be in the description below. About six weeks ago, I did a live unboxing of this, and I will leave a link in the description below for those that didn't catch it. I highly recommend it because it has some really nice packaging. The accessories are all included with this, and I go over the unboxing experience. For those that didn't see it, again, link will be in the description below. Now, this is a really nice design overall. Obviously, the two displays are something that make it pretty unique, but it also has a nice title teal finish in this all-metal design, and I think the overall aesthetics are really good. Now, with a weight of 1.34 kilograms or 2.95 pounds, definitely not the lightest out there, but of course, certainly portable enough to take with you on the go. And for those wondering, you're looking at a total travel weight of 1.96 kilograms or 4.32 pounds. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is full function, which supports data, charge, and display out. Moving over to the right side is your power button with an LED indicator light in it, letting you know the device is powered on. Next to that is your kill switch for the webcam. And finally, you get two more USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader and there's no headphone jack for those wondering. Now internally, this comes with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM and it is running in dual channel mode and it is running at 6400 megahertz. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. Now, as far as the SSD, I don't have a way to get inside this laptop like other laptops, so I'm not really sure if it's upgradable. My inclination or my hunch is that it is and it's that it's using an M.2 NVMe, but of course I can't be sure of that. But as you can see from these reads and writes, these are some really good, excellent results here for 2023. Now, before we get to the display, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Best Buy, and I've teamed up with Best Buy once again to bring you top deals here for July 2023. A lot of great savings here, so let's get right to it. Here's a great deal. Laptop from HP, $299.99, $200 off. It's got a Core i3, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage. Comes in the natural silver. For 300 bucks, folks, you can't beat it. For those gamers out there, check this deal out. The HP Omen AMD Advantage Edition, that 16.1-inch gaming laptop, down to $799.99. That's an incredible $780 off the initial asking price, a steal at that price point. Here's one I just reviewed recently, the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 14-inch laptop with that 90 hertz 2.5K touchscreen display, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050, and that comes in at $899.99. That's a great deal. That's $300 off the initial asking price. That is a really good one, folks. 
And here's one I just reviewed this week, the HP Envy 16 here for 2023, Core i9, 16 gigs of RAM, RTX 4060, one terabyte of storage, $1,099.99, $650 off. This is a deal too good to pass up. And those of you who've been waiting to buy the Dell XPS 15 9530 with the Core i9, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the OLED version here with the 3.5K resolution, $239999, that's a $400 savings. This might be the time to strike, this might be the time to get it. And here's another great deal, the Acer Swift Edge, the 16-inch laptop with a gorgeous 3.2K, 120 hertz OLED display running the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. That is, of course, going to be the latest and greatest here from Acer. Hopefully, I'll be getting one into the studio. It's in that gorgeous olivine black. I've reviewed its predecessor, but I haven't reviewed this one. This one is down $200 to $1,099.99, a deal too good to pass up in my opinion. Now, these are just some of the deals Best Buy has right now. I'll leave links for everything in the description below. There are even more over on their website. So make sure you head on over to Best Buy and check out their top deals for July 2023. And I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's talk about the displays, and they are really good. The dual 13.3 inch 2.8K displays, each with a resolution of 2880 by 1800. They are pretty much excellent OLED displays, really good for content creation when it comes to things like Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing. They were very good because it has great coverage of the color gamut, and it is also pretty color accurate as they both have a very good Delta E score. Now, as far as brightness is concerned, Lenovo claims that these can get as bright as 400 nits. Now, I measured an average of about 368 nits for each, so not quite the claimed 400 nits, but certainly bright enough for these displays. Now, these are both 60 hertz displays. There's no option for higher refresh rate. Just keep that in mind. But I think that's a good thing on these dual displays, not because of the fact that it's not as smooth as a 90 hertz or 120, but because you'll save on battery life. But a battery life has actually turned out to be pretty good. We'll get into that in a little bit. And of course, you can use these with the pen. Pen support is really good on this. It has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Taking notes, sketching out artwork has all worked well on either display. That has been pretty good. And for those wondering, yes, you can store the pen in the folio case, as you see here. So this is the camera on the brand new Lenovo Yoga Book 9i here for 2023. The dual OLED displays on this are absolutely gorgeous. And this, of course, is a 1080p camera. We're looking at 30 frames per second. It's IR, meaning you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. And I highly recommend it because there is no fingerprint scanner on this. It makes it a lot easier to log in, of course. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? Let me know in the comment section below. One thing to note, there is a shutter switch if you want more security and privacy. That actually worked out pretty well. Loving having that. And of course, uh, there is a mute button on the keyboard and so forth. So again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now hitting five fingers on it brings up the virtual keyboard and actually the virtual keyboard has been a pleasant surprise as far as tactility, feedback of the haptics on it has been actually pretty good. Although it doesn't really match that of a physical keyboard, that would be the more preferable manner in terms of typing out a long document or an email, but in a pinch, the virtual keyboard certainly gets the job done. Well, by now you're probably wondering, well, how's the haptic touchpad? Is it as good as a physical touchpad? The answer is, not really, although it has been a pleasant surprise in terms of just how good the haptics have been for a virtual touchpad. But of course, I don't think it will totally replace a physical touchpad in the end of the day. But I think the fact that they do include that mouse in the box is a really key accessory because that has been great when using it in the dual screen mode, making things a lot easier. So I like the fact they do include that. But I think a virtual touchpad in this manner has been a good implementation, just won't totally replace a physical touchpad touchpad at the end of the day. 
Okay, let's get into performance, and it's really good for what you're getting here as far as a U-series processor. Yes, it has the Intel Core i7-1355U. That's 10 cores, 8 efficient cores, and 2 performance cores. And as you can see from these benchmark results, good for everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, they worked well. Now, as far as the Cinebench R23, you're looking at a good multi-core score, good single-core score. Overall, pretty decent performance for an ultra-portable laptop of this nature. Doing things such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing all worked well, getting the job done. So no complaints on that front. Now, where you have to be careful is with your expectations when it comes to graphics, as this only has the integrated Iris XE graphics. Not the best solution out there, especially when there are other laptops at this price point that have a discrete GPU. Now, you can do Photoshop, Lightroom, content creation of that sort to an extent, of course. Keep in mind, you don't have a discrete GPU. And doing things such as video editing in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, I would stick to 1080p video editing for the most part, although you can do some light 4K video editing. And when I rendered a three minute 4K video in DaVinci Resolve, it took two minutes and 53 seconds to render that video. Not quite as good, of course, as the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED, which sports an RTX 4080, as well as a Core i9 H series processor. That, of course, has a distinct advantage, especially when it comes to 4K video editing and rendering. Now, the integrated Iris XE graphics is really the bottleneck here. Video playback was fine in 4K, but when you rendered or edited the video, it was okay but I wouldn't do any heavy intensive 4K video editing on this laptop, but in a pinch, it will get the job done. And having the two displays means when you're editing a video in DaVinci Resolve means you can use that second display as a video monitor out, a nice clean feed. Now, keep in mind, this is not a gaming laptop. I think you already know that since it only has the integrated Iris XE graphics, but you can get some playable frame rates if you lower some of the settings in certain titles, of course. That will be doable on your downtime, but I wouldn't expect to play AAA titles on their high settings, just not in the cards, although it does have Thunderbolt 4 ports on it, so you can potentially add an external GPU. Now, very good news when it comes to power throttling, getting a passing score of 99.6% on the time spy stress test, meaning it detected little, if any, thermal throttling. That's really good. And good news when it comes to surface temperatures, never getting overly hot, even under heavy load, never too hot to the touch. That's been pretty good. And when it comes to fan noise, you'll definitely notice it in the performance mode, getting about 43, 44 decibels. But when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks, for the most part, really not an issue in terms of fan noise. Okay, let's talk about battery life. And the Yoga Book 9i has 80 watt hours in terms of the battery, and it did pretty well on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test. It did 12 hours and 26 minutes with both displays on. When I ran it in laptop mode, a more traditional way, it did 11 hours and 20 minutes. Both are very good results. And when I did the video playback test, it did nine hours and 52 minutes. Also a very respectable number here showing good battery life in a very versatile manner here. So whether you're doing productivity work, whether you're watching movies, this will give you pretty good battery life overall. And it takes about two hours to give you a full charge with the included power adapter. Now, this sports Dolby Atmos speakers. There are quad speakers for two tweeters and two woofers for some really excellent sound, especially for a Windows laptop. I think they did an outstanding job. And I did a comparison with the MacBook Pro 14 in that live unboxing. Let's see the results here. Just so we can end next to 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i here for 2023? And I think they did an outstanding job here with this dual display wonder. I love the stunning dual 2.8K OLED displays. It goes without saying. The keyboard, mouse, pen, stand, all included at no additional cost. That is good. It's included. Title teal finish is absolutely gorgeous. And if you love to multitask, this is going to be a dream laptop for you. There's no doubt about it. And you're looking at some pretty good battery life here thanks to the 80 watt hour battery that this has. No thermal throttling detected even under heavy load. And it has three Thunderbolt 4 ports that allow you to connect to peripherals, monitors, accessories, and the like. That has been great. Negatives here, no USB-A port, no SD card reader. There's no headphone jack. That'll piss some people off. It uses Iris XE graphics, of course, not the greatest here. Fingerprint magnet overall, not too bad, but I did notice it. And reflective displays in certain lighting conditions and you'll notice the fan noise under heavy load but when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks wasn't much of an issue now of course i recognize the fact that this is not for everyone but for those that want dual what? displays in one single laptop this is the way to go they did an excellent job here especially for the multitasker you're gonna love it so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below let me know how i'm doing let me know if there's a device or something out there you think i should review i'll do my best to try to make that happen don't forget to check me out on facebook twitter instagram and of course on threads links for everything will be in the description below so until next time this is andrew and i'll see you in the next video